Uh, we are going to uh, go into a, a study. Uh, again, we're still talking about loving God and loving people. And in doing that, we're going to kind of set up today about what is love. I so wanted to play that song by Tina Turner. What's love got to do, got to do with it? You guys know that song? Did you recognize it? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> You heathens. <laughs> but love has everything to do with it. Because our God is a God of love. Amen? Matter of fact, the Bible says that God is love. He's not just a loving being. He is love. And without God, there would be no love. And because God is love, we can love. And all of us is created to love as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and play a video. And it's going to just kind of talk about what people think love is. Let's watch this video and bring it up on the audio. What does the word love mean to you? Wow. Ooh. Ooh, love. Uh, love. <laughs> <laughs> love. Oh my goodness. That means you love somebody. I think love is... Uh, love is a way... Actually, I'm not really sure how to answer this question. It's like, it's complicated. <laughs> Love is a complicated thing. Well, one of the definitions is that condition or state where the happiness of another is essential to one's own. I think love is just a form of God. Well, if you're talking family-wise, it means everything. But if you're talking like, like marriage, I mean, you can be single, and that's kind of what I want to do. Wow, love is deep. Oh, you know, you're asking the wrong age group because the first thing I want to do is say love means never having to say you're sorry. Love means never having to say you're sorry. But I don't believe that at all because I feel like you say you're sorry a lot. Love to me is the greatest marketing campaign ever invented. Love for me is being 100% vulnerable and all the way in, you know. You can love yourself first. Because once you learn how to love yourself, you can love anything in this world. Someone that loves you loves you because you're you. Love means accepting people the way they are. It has to be a two-way street. It can't just be, you know, I'm accepting you, you, you gotta accept me too. I think that it's being able to do something for somebody else that maybe you wouldn't normally do or maybe you wouldn't want to do, but you do it anyway because it's something that they want to do. Even if you like hate it so much, you just would do anything because you want to be with them. Love is a powerful thing. It makes you uh, do the things you never thought you could do. And um, I think it just it, it makes life worth living. Everything else becomes nothing. Okay, all that matters is that, that the whole two hearts, you know, to expand to that infinity. It means in a funny way, freedom, because you're free to feel so many feelings so deeply. Love to me is something you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And so you can, you can hold affection and you can hold nostalgia, but I think love is active. I always say I'd rather love someone than be in love with someone, because being in love with someone implies that you can fall out of it. If you're really close to your family, I consider that love, right? So any other person, friend or family or love interest, if you see them as your family, then that's love. Love means to me a big old kiss on the mouth. <laughs> you don't, you're not against it at all. I, I'm, I'm married 55 years. Our job in life, the two of us, is to look after each other and see to it that we're our best selves, so to speak. So I try to help her be her best self, and she tries to help me, and uh, to me, that's love. You know, I hope to do that as long as I, I can stay awake. It's like something you can dance about, or something you can sing about, or something you can build a building about, but I don't know. I don't really feel like words suffice when it comes to that. <sighs> love me. I don't 
sounds pretty great. I guess you can't describe it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Well, love obviously means a lot to a lot of people, doesn't it? But I think we really want to know what real love is. Lots of times people make something that is not love and they think that's love. And then their lives suffer from it, doesn't it, at times? And so we really want to go after what is love. I think that's one of the first things that we, we need to lay a foundation is, so what is love before we actually say, Let's talk about love. Well, having said that, we're not going to answer that question today. But I am going to say this. We want to talk about the importance of love. How God values love. You have no idea how much God values love. You know, you and I was created in the image of God. And in the image of God is fellowship. You have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are in perfect unison. They love each other. They love each other. And you and I was created in that image in that we can know love, we can receive love, and we can give love. We was also created for fellowship. You have the fellowship of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You were created for fellowship. You weren't created to be alone. And maybe at some point in your life, you felt alone. You felt like no one else wanted you. You weren't created for that. I want you to know that. And that longing you have in your heart is there because God has put it there. And God wants us to experience that with Him and also with the world around us, with people around us. God wants us to love Him and to love people around us. And love is very, very important to God. And so therefore, it should be important to us. Amen? What's important to God should be important to us. Do you think so? Absolutely. It's not that God says, well, what's important to you is important to me. That's not it. So many times, Lord, I got this plan, I got this stuff, and it's so important to me. God, bless it, bless it, bless it, Lord. And God does want to bless some things, but we should be seeking what, what does God want us to do. Amen? We should be seeking, Lord, what is it you want us to follow? How close do you want us to follow you in this situation? We should see what God wants. And one of the things that God wants us to know is this, love and fellowship are vital and especially vital in the end times in which we live in today we need it love amen so with that i want to uh give you a scripture what does god said what god says is the most important thing in a believer's life matter of fact a lot of this stuff comes from who guys know rick warren great teaching he has a great uh series called actually and i would love to do that sometime love i would like to do that sometime and that is uh 40 days of love but today I want to talk about what does God say is the most important thing in a believer's life. Let's look at, look at the Bible to find that. That's a great place to start. 1 Corinthians 13. And it'll be the very last verse in that chapter. And then we'll go to the first verse in chapter 14. So they just go right into each other. Here it goes. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Love, let love be your highest goal. See that right there, church? There's three things that's going to last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And God says, if of these three things are going to last forever, the most important is love. And that it should be yours and my highest goal. We should say, I want to know what it is. I want to know how to love. I want to be able to love. I want to be able to love the way God has called and created me to love. I want to love. And that should be our highest goal. Number one, number one, number one priority. Our greatest ambition. It's your life's purpose. It's not to be in the top 10. It's to be number one. Say number one. God has called us to love. God has called us to love. What does that look like? Is it going to be a feeling? Is it actions? What is it? You know, I want to know. That's what we're here to going to learn a little bit about. But why does God want you and I to, uh, to love? Why does God want us to love other people? And why does he want us to make love our highest goal? Let me give you two simple reasons, okay? Number one, love is the supreme value in life. I mean, this is the thing we should value more than anything else. There's a lot of things in my life I like. I like my gyro. I like, uh, no, that's about it. Uh, uh, oh, I like my wife. I, <laughs> I love my wife. I love my kids. I love you guys. Oh, my goodness, there's a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> but the greatest value 
It's God wants us to go after love. Love Him and love people. Uh, Pharisees, they went to Jesus Christ and they said, Jesus, teacher, what is the greatest commandment in all of God's law? Tell us what it is. Actually, they were trying to trap him. And here's what Jesus said in Matthew 22, verse 37. He says this. Jesus replied, you must love. Say love. You must love who? The Lord your God. And love him with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second commandment is equally important. Say equally important. Equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Think about this. The Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments, the morals of our lives. Of those Ten Commandments, the very first four, I'll, I'll go from you guys' point of view, the very first four is all about our relationship with God the Father. The first four is talking about how our love for God should be there. And the remaining six is all about how our relationship with people all around us. See, even God's law points to that we're to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we're to love people just as much as we love ourselves. That's what God has called us to do in that. God wants us to choose to love him. God wants us to choose to love people. 18 times, as a matter of fact, that verse right there, to love the Lord your God with all your heart and to love people as yourself, that's shown in the Bible not one, two, three, not five, six, seven, at least 18 times that I could find in the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament even says to love God and to love people. We think that was a teaching of Jesus. It was a teaching of God throughout all of human history. We're to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love people. And if God says it 18 times in the Bible, we better pay attention. Amen? It's a value that God values and he wants us to value that as well. So there's got to be something within us that's got to change so that we can love. Hallelujah. God is shouting, love is what matters most in life. Relationships is what matters most in life. Our love for God matters. Our love for people matters. Our relationship with God matters. God wants a relationship with us. I mean, you, you have a relationship with someone you love, don't you? And our relationship with people matters to God as well. And to be honest with you, a lot of our lives don't really reflect that, does it? I mean, I, mean, I don't want to sit here and just start pointing out different things, but... I think more than anything, we love ourselves more than we love God and more than we love people. And that's where Terry Baldwin falls a lot. I love me. I love what I want. I love for what I want. I want to make Terry happy more than I want to make anything else. I want to see Terry succeed in everything else more than I want anybody else to succeed. I want to go after what Terry wants more than I want to go after what God wants Terry to go after. And so we fall short of that, don't we? How many of you guys are with me? Look at all those terrible Terry's out there. Oh, God wants us to go after him. God wants us to trust him in that. And lots of times our lives don't reflect it. Marriages fall apart. I'm sorry. God's not mad at you. God, God wants to heal and restore you. It wasn't God's plan for that to happen. Can I tell you that? How about this? Relationships with our children, relationships with the brothers or sisters, or even our parents. Some, some people have not talked to their family in years. And there's grudges that cannot get over. Love gets over grudges. As a matter of fact, we're going to learn some of the things that love is and what it does. And one of those things is it doesn't hold grudges. It forgives. It forgives. And I, I got to tell you right now, I can't do that in my flesh. I need something inside of me to do that. Amen? So are you guys with me? You guys a bunch of... All right, good. Praise the Lord. I'm, with, I'm, I'm in good company today. All right. All right, one thing that doesn't work, by the way, God calls us to love him and to love people. And the one thing that doesn't work, and listen to this, this is very important, trying harder doesn't work. Try, how many of you guys have very tried hard to love someone? I've tried to love that person. <laughs> I, I can almost hear that being said. I've tried to love that person. I just can't. There's marriages. I've tried for 20 years. I've tried for 15 years. I've tried. You have no idea, Pastor Terry. You're telling me I've got to do it again and try harder? No, I'm not saying you've got to try harder. I'm saying we've got to have a love within us that can love them. Because our heart and our own flesh and our own love, our human love, cannot do it. So it's got to be a spiritual thing. So God, if, listen, if God has called you to love, he'll give you the ability to love. That means we can do it. Amen? 
So that doesn't mean, oh, I'm going to fail this one. Forget that one. I'm not going to be able to do that one. You, won't, you don't have to fail this. I don't have to fail this. We can love God with all of our hearts. And we can love people as much as we love ourselves. And that's a lot. <laughs> Amen? All right. All right. You guys are with me. It takes more. What I'm trying to say is this. It takes more than human effort to love people. <laughs> Hallelujah. It takes a miracle. Amen? Because it takes a miracle to love some people. Uh, we are after God's love, though, in our lives. First John 4 tells us, and I've already said this, that God is love. Say that with me. God is love. He, that, that's him. That's his being. And humans, God's love lasts forever. Humans' love wears out. God's love lasts forever. Human love wears out. So we need God's love in our lives so we can love people, so we can love God. And I got to stop right now. And you guys heard my testimony. I'm not going to give it all, but I just want to say this. This, this is my testimony. I realized I did not love God. And it wasn't like, I hate you, God. It's just I realized I've got nothing for you. I've got nothing for you. And so that was my prayer. And it, it, I don't know what it is. It was the Holy Spirit. In that moment, and the Holy Spirit says, well, ask me for love. So that was my prayer. I said, God, I don't love you, and you know it. Will you give me, and this, I promise you, this is my prayer. Will you give me love to love you? And that's how I prayed. A month later, I saw uh, videos given to me, and it was a man on fire for God and in love with God. And she's like, wow, that's what I want. And what that did, it caused me to surrender. I surrender. It's like, ah. Oh. I surrender. And it was at that moment that God's love came in so that I could love him. And now I love God. And I even love you. <laughs> and, you know, that's not natural. <laughs> it's not natural for me. And it won't be natural for you. It's got to be, say it with me, supernatural. supernatural. And God will give you the supernatural love to love people. And him. So, I'm a living testimony of this. Uh, so we can't try harder. We need the Holy Spirit. And God's love lasts. Human love wears out. Hallelujah. God's love will change your relationships. I love that so you can love your husband. You can love your wife. So you can love your children like you're supposed to. And you can love your neighbors like you're supposed to. Check this out. So you can love your enemies. God calls me to love my enemies. Yeah. That's got to be supernatural. Hallelujah. That's the love we're after. We're not after trying harder. I'm so glad for that. But we're after fill me with your love. Hallelujah. Uh, so if you don't learn to love, I just want to say this. Your life is a failure. I'm going to read that scripture again. It won't be up there. I'm just going to read the whole. Well, it might be. I don't know. I have no idea if I did or not. But it goes this. Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love is the supreme value in our lives. Amen. Number two. Love is the primary objective in our lives. That, that should be our goal. I said, that's my objective. I'm, I'm going for it. And so what I'm going to do now, we're going to look at 1 Corinthians. We're just going to look at the first three verses in chapter 13. And we're going to learn five different ways. And they're quick ones. Five different uh, uh, primary objectives in our life. The first one is this. If I don't live a life of love, nothing I say will matter. Say that with me. Nothing I say will matter. Check this out. Verse 1, 1 Corinthians 13. If I could speak in any language in heaven or on earth, but I didn't love others, I would be only making a meaningless noise, like a, a loud gong or a clanging cymbal. See, without love, when we speak to people, it means nothing. It means nothing. There's a saying, I don't know how it goes, it's something like this. People don't care what you say, they care what you, who you love, they care how you treat them. And when you love on them, then they will care what you have to say. So, Bible tells this, that without love in our life, anything we say doesn't matter. We can say, oh, I love you, oh, this is great, oh, you're, you know, it doesn't matter what we say. It means nothing until they know that you really love them. Amen? All right. Um, God says words without love is just noise. It's empty and it's worthless. I want my words to matter. How about you? Second thing is this. If I don't live a life of love, nothing I know matters. 
You can know everything there is to know. Look at verse 2, the first half of it. It says, if I had the gift of prophecy and if I knew all the matters of the future and I knew everything about everything, but I didn't love others, what good would it be? It would be worthless. Without love, it doesn't matter what you know. It is nothing. Love is what gives it value. And love is the thing that we should pursue after that as well. You could have four college degrees. You could have five college degrees. They could call you Mr. and Mrs. Fahrenheit. You have all these degrees. It doesn't matter. With all that knowledge and you don't have love, it means absolutely nothing. You could be a genius. You guys are finally getting that, okay? For all you uh, uh, metric people, they could call you Mr. and Mrs. Celsius, okay? All right? Mr. Heat Miser? I, I won't do it, okay? <laughs> That's for all those people who know cartoons. So anyway... You can know everything. You could be a genius. You could be brilliant. You could be a walking Bible encyclopedia. Know everything about the Bible. But without love, big deal. Wow. That, that, think about that. Without love, everything you know about the Bible is nothing. God is love. He wants to give us his love. He wants to give us supernaturally his love. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Brilliance with lo without love is zero. The third thing, if I don't uh, live a life of love, nothing I believe will matter. You could believe everything the Bible tells you to believe. You can have faith. Look at this. In the, um, by the way, following Jesus is more than just knowing about Jesus. Following Jesus means you live and, and, and you love just like him. Following Jesus is more than knowing all the things about Jesus Christ, all the details, all he went through, all the history. And it's more about knowing him personally and living and walking just like him. And the Bible says this, in uh, the second half of verse 2, And if I had the gift of faith, if I had the gift of faith so that I could speak to that mountain and make it move without love, I would be no good to anybody. Wow! No wonder... Jesus warns us that those in the end times that they will stand before God they say God I had faith to move mountains God I had faith to see people healed and they were healed God I cast out demons in your name God says but did you know me and did you love me did we have a relationship I didn't know you and I don't look you didn't know me and you didn't love me and I don't know you so depart from me I never knew you the Bible warns us about that what's it talking about if we don't have a loving relationship with God doesn't matter our faith it means nothing to us amen so faith without love doesn't matter how about the fourth thing is this if I don't live a life of love nothing I give matters verse 3 it says this if I gave everything I have to the poor and I'm going to skip to the very part last part of that it would be of no value whatsoever without love if I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would be of no value whatsoever. Our value comes from God's love in our lives and loving Him and loving people. Giving, us, uh, giving is not necessarily loving. Giving is not necessarily loving. Sometimes that's some people's uh, love language is, I love to give. And I love to receive, okay, right? But the thing is, so lots of times we like to say, well, let me give you, let me show you my love by why I give you. There's been many a man who says, you know what? I've given my family everything they've wanted. I gave them the home. I gave them the, the college degrees. I gave them the cars. I gave them anything they wanted. And now my wife is leaving me. Why? Did you love her? I don't have a relationship with my kids now, and I gave them everything. Did you love them? Love is not about just giving. It's about giving of our lives. And it's about pouring out. And we're going to talk about that and, and we'll let God lead us into that. But I want you to know, giving doesn't replace love. They want you. They want a relationship with you. They want time with you. They want you to share your life with them. They don't care about your gifts. They want you. They want your love. Hallelujah. So, and then the last one is this. Fifth one. Nothing I accomplish will matter. Nothing I accomplish will matter. And again, I'm going to read that same verse, but the emphasis is going to be on the latter part. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. What's it talking about there? 
It's talking about uh, the, the things that you've done before, that's so important for people and the things that you could brag about, the things that you could boast about. Look what I've done. Look at the sacrifice I made. Look at the accomplishments that I've done in my life. But if I didn't love others, it would be of no value whatsoever. Relationships are more important than accomplishments. Relationships are more important than your accomplishments whatsoever. There, uh, there's people who are when they're dying on their deathbed, do they ever ask this? Bring me my bowling trophy. I want to look at it one more time. <laughs> do they do that? No. Do they say, bring me my degrees off the, wall, off the wall. I want to look at them one more time. Look at this accomplishment. They don't ask for those things whatsoever. They don't say, bring me my bank portfolio. Bring me this and that. Bring me anything that I've done. I want to look at it one more time. What did they ask for? I want my family. I want my family around me right now. I want those who love me and I love them. That's what matters. That's what matters. Amen? So it doesn't matter what we accomplish in life. If you don't, you can accomplish great things. And God wants you to accomplish great things. Don't get me wrong. But he wants us to do it with his love in our lives. Love for him and love for people. Love is what's going to make a difference. I mean, there's lots of songs that talk about it. Love... Uh, I, I can't even think of the songs right now. But anyway, there's a lot. I don't listen to them, obviously. But anyway, it doesn't matter. What matters is that we truly love God and allow His supernatural love in our life to change us, to love Him more, and to give us a love for people that is not normal, so, but it comes from God because God loves people. God loves people. And He wants to love people through you. He wants to love people through you. He wants to love people through you. He also wants to love people through your tacos. They're awesome. But anyway, God wants to love you. <laughs> I'm pointing at Sandy and her famous tacos. But anyway, here we go. People will figure this out at the end. People are going to figure all this stuff out at the very end. I mean, even those, even those movie stars, they don't ask for their movies. Show me, bring me all my movies and surround me with all my movies I was in. I start in. No, they want to be surrounded by their people. The things that matters the most, the things that we should value the most, and the things that we should pursue the most is love. God's love. Say God's love. God's love. And that's the thing we really have to understand. God's love, not our love. We don't try harder. Hallelujah. What matters most at the end of life is people that we have a relationship with. People will figure this out at the very end of their life. So let's learn it sooner than later. Amen? That's what God wants us to do. The only thing that matters is our relationship with God. Jimmy, could you come forward? Yeah, that's it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Here's a summary. You could be the most eloquent speaker. <laughs> Obviously, that doesn't pertain here. <laughs> you could be the most eloquent speaker whatsoever. Without love, it matters nothing. You can have all the knowledge in the world. People come to you from all over the world. Tell me, tell me. Without love, that knowledge won't last forever. We want things that's going to last for eternity. And love lasts for eternity. You can have all the faith of a miracle worker. You can give everything away. You can give all your money. You can live like a pulper and just let, bless people. But without love, that's nothing. You just threw your money away. You can accomplish great things, but without love in your life, all this is nothing. And in God's eyes, the only thing that matters is, do we love Him? And do we love people? Love is very important to God. And so we need to make it important to ourselves. Amen? Say, Lord God, if that's important to you, then I believe that you will give me love to love you. I can attest to that. I believe that you'll give me love that I can go into a situation where I've been hurt so, so, so bad that I don't think I can heal and I don't think I can forgive. God says, I can. I can. Lean upon me and I will give you the strength to do that. Hallelujah. This is my testimony. Hallelujah. So I want to read this one more time, that whole 1 through 3, 1 Corinthians. It says this, If I could speak in any language in heaven or on earth, but I didn't love others, I would only be making a meaningless, meaningless noise like a loud gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy and I knew all the mysteries of the future and I knew everything about everything but I didn't love others, what good would that be? And if I had the gift of faith so that I could speak to mountains and make it move without love, 
I would be no good to anybody. If I gave everything I have to the poor, and even if I sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would be of no value whatsoever. Love is the most important aspect of our lives, and that God wants us to realize that. And when we love God, listen to this. When we love God and we love people, then keeping the Ten Commandments is nothing. Amen? We won't do things against people that will harm them. We won't be jealous of them. We won't lie to them. We won't steal from them. We won't do the things that, that hurts them. We won't because we love them. So that six of the Ten Commandments is taken care of. And if we love God, then He'll be pre premier in our lives. And we, we won't use His name in vain. We won't, uh, we'll, we'll treat His day as holy and Him as holy. We will love Him above everything else and, and we will have no other gods before Him. It'll be easy. So with love in our, our lives, the love of God in our lives, the Ten Commandments will take care of themselves. Amen? Hallelujah. It's fulfilled in love and that's what God wants to do. So I want us to pray right now. We're going to pray. I'm going to lead us in prayer and, and let that be your prayer. Say, ah, wow, that sounds good. And I love that God wants us to do that. But it's got to be God. Well, I'm telling you right now, God will give it to you. God will give it to you. I'm not saying as soon as you pray this prayer, as soon as you go out of here, all of a sudden you're just going to slobber all over people and like that 16-year-old says, I, I just want a wet kiss. You know, it's not going to be like that. <laughs> it's not going to be like that. But it's going to be this progression. It's going to be this change. It's going to be this, you're going to be patient. You're going to be kinder. You're going to be gentler. You're going to forgive. You're going to love. And God is doing it through you because you're surrendered to Him. And it will happen. It will happen. I'm here to tell you as my witness. It will happen as God's witness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you that you are love. Oh, God. You could be nothing but a God of vengeance and hate and anger. Just like the gods of this world, the false gods of this world who demand things demand getting even who demand that we give everything to you without a relationship no you are love and you are a God of love and I thank you Lord God that you are love God whether I get anything else done today or not I want to learn to love amen that should be your prayer say this with me God whether I get anything done today or not I want to learn to love. I want to learn to love you a little bit more. I want to learn to love people. Say it loud, church. I want to learn to love people a little bit more. Holy Spirit, I want you to make sure, I want to make sure <laughs> that I spend time with you today loving you and loving people. Lord, thank you. That is our prayer. And I thank you, God, that you give us all that we need. In Jesus' name. As you guys are still praying, you guys' heads are bowed, eyes are closed, I just want to reach out. There might be someone here today who says, you know what, I, I'm not right with Jesus. I'm not right with God. I, I feel so far away. I do. God doesn't want you to feel far away. As a matter of fact, God is calling you to come closer into a relationship with Him. And if that's you, you just want to rededicate your life Resurrender your life to God. God will do that. You want to take care of those obstacles, that sin in your life that you've let set there for a long, long time. Now is the time to deal with it. So nothing will obstruct the love of God and the healing of God coming into your life. If that is you, say, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus today. Will you just slip at your hands towards heaven? Say, Jesus, this hand's for you. I want to surrender my life to you. Yes, I see those hands. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yes, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is doing a work on hearts today, in my heart. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you see these hands, and you know these hearts, and they want to have a relationship with you. Thank you, God. I pray right now for the infilling of the Holy Spirit to come into your life, and that the power of God would just over, the love of God would overshadow you and just overwhelm you. In Jesus' mighty name, He will fill you to overabundance. He will be pressed down. It will be shaken together, and it will be running over in your life. The love of God and the presence of God. Lord, you're working right now. You're working ahead. You're working in tomorrow. 
preparing the things for our paths that Lord as we cross that there will be this new surrender to you there will be this new change to you you'll be bringing things into our lives Lord God thank you thank you that you're there Lord God working for us in Jesus mighty name Lord bless your people today I pray bless them Lord God with your presence and your love and may we leave this place uh, more like Jesus Christ in Jesus name and God's people said Amen. God bless you guys. Don't forget, you know some young people that encourage them, say, check that out. Go to the church's Facebook page or the church's web page and check that out. I encourage you to do that. Well, God bless you, church. Goodbye. <laughs>